Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Champs to Chumps. The series where we explore how an NHL team reached the top of the hockey world by winning a Stanley Cup championship, and what led to their eventual downfall in the years that followed. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at the Windy City's third championship in six years, as we investigate how the 2015 Chicago Blackhawks went from champs to chumps. So let us begin with how they became champions. Now this story begins on June 9th, 2010, when the Chicago Blackhawks, led by first round draft picks Jonathan Taze, Patrick Kane and Brent Seabrook, second round pick Duncan Keith and fourth round pick Nicholas Jolmerson, as well as free agent signing Marion Hossa and trade acquisition Patrick Sharp, beat the Philadelphia Flyers in six games in the finals to clinch the 2010 Stanley Cup. After years of struggle since the turn of the millennium, years of missing the playoffs during the noughties and struggling to get fans into seats, a pair of top three draft picks, some impressive scouting, expert wheeling and dealing by general manager Stan Bowman, and great team management from head coach Joel Quenville, had helped the Blackhawks to the franchise's first cup in 50 years, and had created a strong nucleus of players, many of whom are still part of the franchise today. More importantly though, this championship winning core would help the team remain cup contenders and champions for much of the upcoming decade. After a disappointing seven-game first-round exit in 2011 and a six-game first-round exit in 2012, the lockout-shortened 12-13 season saw the already strong core of the Blackhawks roster, joined by new long-term additions and former second-round picks, Corey Crawford and Brian Bickle, as well as former fifth-round pick and expert agitator Andrew Shaw. Crawford in particular would have a big impact on Chicago moving forwards, as he earned the role of starting netminder for the team following the departures of Antti Niemi and Cristobal Huey after the team's 2010 Cup. This addition to the crease, along with the bolstering of their forward depth and physical presence to an already strong group, culminated in the Blackhawks beating the Boston Bruins in Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Finals on June 24, 2013, to clinch their second cup in four years. With their new starting netminder of the future found, their defensive core solidified, and their top six locked in, the Blackhawks were lifting the cup yet again, and showing no signs of slowing down. Following a seven-game loss in the Western Conference Finals to the eventual cup champions, the Los Angeles Kings, during the 13-14 season, and with the addition of former second-round pick, Brandon Saad into their top six forward core, the Blackhawks were looking locked and loaded for another deep playoff run. And boy did they live up to expectations! The 14-15 season saw the Blackhawks continue as a perennial cup contender. Taze and Kane led the team in scoring just like they had in several years before, despite somewhat lower stats than years past. Hosa, Keith and Sharp still put up strong numbers, Crawford stood tall in the crease, Saad became a key contributor for the team, and recent free agent signing and aging veteran Brad Richards was helping provide some depth scoring and stability to the lower half of the forward core. All of their key pieces, living up to expectations once again, led to the Blackhawks finishing the year with a 48-26-6 record good enough for third place in a stacked central division, and fourth place in the Western Conference. This meant that Chicago had booked their place in the postseason for the seventh straight year, and were ready to lift the cup once again and regain their title as the best hockey team in the world. The first two rounds of the playoffs were nothing too difficult for the Blackhawks, as they dispatched the Predators in six games in round one, and swept the Minnesota Wild in round two for an 8-2 record. However, Chicago looked vulnerable against their opponents in the Western Conference Finals, the Anaheim Ducks. The teams split the first four games of the series down the middle, 
with the Ducks taking games 1 and 3, and the Blackhawks taking games 2 and 4. Despite the even series, the Blackhawks required either double or triple overtime to get their two wins, meaning those games could have easily gone the other way. Though the Ducks would take an OT victory in Game 5 and put the Blackhawks on the brink of elimination, Chicago would force a Game 7 and then win that final game of the series to narrowly advance to the Stanley Cup Finals. Despite going down two games to one in the finals, thanks to a point-per-game performance by Kane, similarly impressive performances by Taze and Keith, as well as good showings from Hosa, Sharp and Richards, on June 15th, 2015, the Chicago Blackhawks beat the Tampa Bay Lightning in Game 6 of the Finals to clinch the 2015 Stanley Cup. After 50 years without a Stanley Cup championship before 2010, the Windy City had just won their third title in six seasons and were on top of the hockey world as a modern-day dynasty. But what goes up must come down. Now that we have seen how they became champs, let's look at how it all went wrong. Though they had just won another title, the cost of keeping their cup-winning core together in the salary cap era was just far too great. Thanks to several core players signing long-term, big-money contracts in the last few years in order to retain their services and help the team win more championships, the Blackhawks had been aware of their impending struggles to keep under the cap for quite some time. In order to limit their cap struggles, several moves involving some key members of their roster had to be made. And so, the fire sale began. Backup goaltender Antti Ranta was traded to the New York Rangers, up-and-coming winger Brandon Saad was sent to the Columbus Blue Jackets, due to the two sides being unable to come to an agreement on the RFA's next contract, and longtime Blackhawk Patrick Sharp was sent to the Dallas Stars in order to free up his $5.9 million cap hit for the next two seasons. These deals were also accompanied by the team losing Brad Richards, face-off specialist Antoine Vermet, and reliable depth defenseman Johnny Oduya via free agency. Less than a month after lifting the cup once again, the Blackhawks had just lost a reliable top six scorer, a new rising star in their top six, their backup goaltender, and several key depth players. Not exactly the best way to show that you're serious about defending your championship, is it? They did, however, bring in a pretty impressive Russian forward from the KHL in the form of Artemi Panarin who would win the Calder Memorial Trophy for Rookie of the Year and help offset most of the off-season scoring losses thanks to his 30-goal, 77-point campaign during the 15-16 season. Panarin would remain one of the team's top scorers during his tenure in the Windy City, before being sent to Columbus to bring Brandon Saad back, and he would be one of the brighter spots on a team sending away fan favourites and key roster players in order to juggle staying under the cap. Despite these noticeable off-season losses, Chicago continued to find similar success in the standings. The Blackhawks finished the 15-16 season with a 47-26-9 record, with a third-place finish in both their division and their conference, thanks to Kane's 46-goal, 106-point season, Panarin's impressive rookie year, as well as strong showings from Taze, Seabrook, Keith, and recent trade acquisition Artem Anisimov. However, the defending cup champions were unable to hold on to their title for another year, as they were defeated in seven games in the first round by the St. Louis Blues. With such a disappointing first round exit, general manager Stan Bowman felt that his team could still win championships due to his cup-winning core remaining almost completely intact, and made it clear that further changes would be made to accommodate their championship aspirations. Bowman's upcoming moves would improve their team in the short term and lead to some strong regular season showings, but the Blackhawks franchise would feel the rippling effects of this continued pursuit of another championship for years to come. 
The month following the conclusion of the 2016 playoffs saw the Blackhawks trade away another pair of key contributors to their latest cup win in order to free up more cap space. Fan favourite Brian Bickle and former first round pick Tavo Teravainen were sent to the Carolina Hurricanes, whilst the team's agitator Andrew Shaw was sent to the Montreal Canadiens. To offset these losses, the Blackhawks would bring in low cost replacements, either through their prospect pool, free agency, or trades. Former Hawk and unrestricted free agent Brian Campbell, as well as Nick Schmaltz, Ryan Hartman, and Richard Panic all joined the team and became contributors for Chicago. These moves, combined with the continued excellence of the usual suspects, would lead to an impressive 50-23-9 record and first place in the Western Conference during the 16-17 season. However, the celebrations wouldn't last long, as the Hawks were swept in the first round of the playoffs by the Nashville Predators. The following offseason saw two more key pieces of the Blackhawks' 2015 championship depart from the team. Nicholas Jolmerson, arguably the team's most reliable defenseman, was traded to the Arizona Coyotes in order to free up cap space, whilst Marion Hossa was forced onto the long-term injured reserve list and unofficially retired from the NHL with four years left of his 12-year contract due to a rare skin condition. This continued breakup of the championship core and their disappointing past few seasons prompted the franchise to also make a coaching change in the following years, which saw longtime head coach and three-time cup champion Joel Quenville relieved of his duties a month into the 1819 season, where he was replaced by Jeremy Colleton. Though they would continue to try and replace their lost players with their prospect pool, cheap free agent deals, or trades, Due to the almost decade-old core of players continuing to get older and lose a bit of the spring in their step, recently, the Blackhawks haven't seen their playoff aspirations come to fruition, as they have missed out on the playoffs for the past two seasons, finishing no higher than sixth place in the Central Division. I feel it's important to mention, though, that the Blackhawks' inability to remain a legitimate playoff contender after 2015 wasn't due to their game plan being outdated, at least in my opinion. Whereas the Los Angeles Kings, for example, used their size and strength to win two cups in three years and have seemingly imploded now that the league has moved more to a speed and skill style, Chicago have always had a bit of everything. They've had speed, they've had size, and they've had skill. They just couldn't find the right pieces to put around their existing core in order to keep their cup hopes alive. They're a jack of all trades, but now a master of none. Bowman's signature trade deadline acquisitions every year just couldn't find the one final piece to help the team get over the hump. They went from being the best in the league on multiple occasions, to being just as good as every other playoff contender, to being a playoff hopeful. However, In an attempt to revive Chicago's championship window, Stan Bowman has made the move to bring several of the players that won the cup in 2015 back to the team after stints elsewhere in the league. Kind of like a band that splits up and gets back together again a few years later, only this time they're older and not as good. The likes of Johnny Oduya, Patrick Sharp, Brandon Saad and Andrew Shaw have all either rejoined the Hawks and remain with the team to this day, or played for the team once again before moving elsewhere or retiring. Despite feeling the need to get the band back together, much of the three-time cup-winning core has actually remained intact on the roster almost half a decade since their last cup win. Of their five highest scorers in the 14-15 regular season, four of them are still on the team and continue to be key or decent point producers for the franchise. Even going back to their 2010 Cup win, of their five highest scorers in the 09-10 regular season, three of them are still on the team. Just goes to show how strong of a core Bowman built for this team that many of their key guys almost a decade ago are still key players for the franchise today. 
By the looks of it, the Chicago Blackhawks do seem to have realised that their cup winning days with their current core are behind them, and are starting to embrace the idea of a multi-year retool or even a rebuild. But given some behemoth contracts, it's going to be tough to completely reshape the roster anytime soon. Taze and Kane take up $10.5 million a year each for the next four years, while Seabrook and Keith take up a combined $12 million for at least the next four seasons too. That's $33 million locked up in just four players, all of which have no movement clauses and two of which are in their mid to late 30s. Taze and Kane continue to earn their keep for the most part, but Keith and Seabrook are really starting to show their age now. They continue to put up respectable stats, sure, but their numbers are very much on the decline, and those yearly cap hits are going to be looking really rough when the two hit 38, 39, or even 40 years old. Such is the cost of keeping a cup-winning core together, eh folks? However, due to the Blackhawks continuing to draft pretty well over the decade, there are some exciting young players coming through the system. Alex Dabrinkat is looking to break out as a league superstar, recent third overall pick Kirby Dak is going to be a solid hockey player, Adam Bockfist looks to become a force on the blue line, and that's not even mentioning young trade acquisitions Dylan Strome or Alex Nylander, who both look to be flourishing in their fresh start in the Windy City. With this next generation of Blackhawks players looking to become key members of the team in the next few years, and with their entry-level contracts being closer to completion with each season, these players are going to need to get paid, or the team will risk losing them to someone else. And with the money locked up in their older players for almost half a decade more, keeping all of these youngsters may be difficult. So, in conclusion... The Chicago Blackhawks were able to win three Stanley Cup championships in just six seasons thanks to their carefully crafted roster in the years before their success. Their high draft picks lived up to expectations, their big trade and free agent acquisitions became key members of the team, and their coach was able to get his players on board with his game plan and know how best to utilise each player's talents. However, as their key guys began to sign the big money contracts of their careers and move past their primes with each season, their up-and-coming prospects who were ready to get paid were shipped elsewhere, as the team had to balance going with what they know had worked and keeping their championship core together, and adding new young talent within the constraints of the league salary cap. The team effectively priced themselves out of another cup, in an ever-changing salary cap world. Regardless of how things have gone since their 2015 Cup, you can't take away the fact that the Chicago Blackhawks achieved something incredible. They won three Cup championships in six years, and are the closest thing the league has seen to a dynasty in the modern NHL. The direction in which things are going now may be a tough pill to swallow after such success, but if you ask any Blackhawks fan, I'm sure they'll tell you it was all worth it. And that's how the 2015 Chicago Blackhawks went from champs to chumps. What do you guys think about this past decade of Blackhawks hockey? Also, is there another team you would like me to look at as part of this series? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Adam Budzizuski, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Jordan Whitehead, Max Artis, Nat Marlow, and Paul Malia for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.